Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. Thank you for joining me once again today. And uh, yeah, we do have another awkward conversation that we have to have. Uh, now, the last video, five top mics for podcasting, got a lot of engagement. We had a lot of great conversations around the types of mics you should be using to do a podcast in 2019. But there was a bit of an issue. I left condensers off that list for a couple reasons. The main reason is, is because people tend to be very dramatic about the differences between a condenser mic like this one or a dynamic mic like the Procaster. And I wouldn't call it a fight. It's more of a disagreement or maybe just some harsh words back and forth. There's a little bit of yelling, mostly angry typing. Oh my God, there's a few hurt feelings. Okay, why'd you say that about my mom? At least there's no punching like last time. Good God. This is Aiden Wolf. All right, let's do this. Dynamic mic versus condenser mic, and which one you should be using for your podcast. So one of the misconceptions between dynamic mics and condenser mics is the fact that dynamic mics pick up less sound than condenser mics. Now, it's not really a misconception, but it's not really a truthful way to discuss the differences between these two types of microphones. They both collect sound, neither of them reject sound, and while they may do it very differently, the end result is the same. You speak into a microphone and sound comes out the other side. I'm not gonna bore you too much with the science of how each microphone works, but just a couple small details that create the differential between dynamic and condenser microphones. So a dynamic microphone has a diaphragm, a voice coil, and a magnet. Now, when you speak into the microphone, it makes the diaphragm vibrate, which also makes the voice coil vibrate. Now, between that magnet and the voice coil, there is a magnetic field. So when you speak into the diaphragm and it vibrates the voice coil, that magnetic field turns your voice into an electrical energy. And once it gets into your computer, that sound is recreated into a digital file and recorded onto your DAW. It is a very simplistic approach to recording sound, and because of that, dynamic microphones are considered more rugged. Now, one of the things dynamic microphones are great for is really high levels of sound, meaning if you wanted to record at a rock concert or somebody screaming into a microphone, a dynamic mic is best for you. Also, the microphones aren't really hampered by humidity or by temperature, which does come into play if you are going to be a run and gunner type of podcaster. On the other hand, condenser mics have a bit of a different kind of setup. Condenser microphones have a diaphragm case and a very thin diaphragm and a back plate that is electrically charged. So when sound hits the diaphragm and it makes the diaphragm move back and forth towards the back plate, that creates an electrical energy that is once again sent through the mic and into your computer. Now, because condenser microphones do have that charged back plate, it needs to have continuous power to keep it going while you're talking into it. That's why phantom power exists. But because of the circuitry that's needed to actually deliver power, cheaper condenser Condenser microphones can also have a bit of a noise to them. But because of all this, condenser microphones are also a little more fragile, meaning they're not going to deal with rough and tumble situations. They also don't deal with humidity or temperature change all that well. And unlike dynamic microphones, they can't take high levels of volume very well. Every condenser microphone should come with a maximum sound level. The one thing these microphones are great at, though, is having great dynamic range. Now, if you're curious about what dynamic range is, it's the lowest level on a piece of audio compared to the highest spot on a piece of audio. Now, in audio engineering terms, dynamic range describes the ratio of the amplitude of the loudest possible undistorted signal all the way down to the noise floor. I won't take you through the actual mathematical principles, but what I will tell you is that dynamic range basically means this microphone is more sensitive. Now, along with dynamic range, you also have frequency response. And for the most part, most condenser microphones have a longer frequency response than a dynamic microphone. Think of it as an EQ. On this side, you've got all the lows, and on this side, you've got all the highs. Now, if you have wider range of a frequency response, that means you'll pick up more lows and you'll pick up more highs. So in essence, you pick up more sound. But that doesn't mean that a dynamic mic rejects sound. It's just not sensitive to it. And to be perfectly honest, those ranges of frequency response that aren't being picked up by a dynamic microphone 
are ranges that most human beings aren't going to be able to hear or at least be able to pick up in a podcast. So with all this information at our fingertips, what can we say about using this microphone in your podcast? Well, it does come with extra sensitivity. So that means if you do not have a treated room, some of those room reflections will be picked up a little bit easier by this microphone. And of course, you can do some stuff with the volume on your mixer or maybe not screaming as loud as you can into the microphone to create a lot of those reflections or you can treat your room. But for the most part, you're going to find you have a better experience with a dynamic microphone because if you don't have the resources to be able to treat a room, maybe you want to be able to get by with the least amount of reflection possible. All this aside though, dynamic microphones will still pick up reflections. So if you're going to be recording in an area that is really poorly treated, you're still going to hear that in the background of your sound. The best example of this is if you try to record your podcast at a dinner table. Now that dinner table is long and flat, the walls probably not much on them, you're going to find a very reflective experience when you're trying to record. One of the best ways to combat this without treating a room is clutter. If you don't believe me, this is a view of my setup. All concrete walls, it's a concrete floor, but the one thing I do have is a whole bunch of crap around me that's reflecting sounds in different directions. So once you start deflecting your sound in multiple directions, it will start to diffuse each time it reflects. So if you have a particularly cluttered area in your house, that will always be the best opportunity to be able to record decent audio with either a condenser microphone like me or a dynamic mic. Thanks for joining me. Have yourself a great evening. Like the video if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button because I've got a lot of great content coming out. And the only purpose for me doing these videos is to make sure you're having great content.